Okay, Apply Closest Join While Digitising. What is that? And should we have it on or off? Well, that depends what you're doing. So I'm going to show you some examples of when you should have it on and when you should have it off or could have it off. Um, and also for those of you with version 9 at the end, I'll show you the new um, tool in the edit toolbox, which will um, reapply the closest join after you've moved objects around you'll understand that more as I go through but for people with all versions um, the apply closest join while digitizing option is on by default and it's in the general tab of your options dialog box the option dialog box is accessed by left clicking on the hammer and spanner icon up here in the middle of the top menu um, you can also access it by right clicking on the um, hoop or the grid and this options dialog will open but of course it will open under the group the grid or the hoop and you have to go to the general tab to find the um, apply closest join option so it's under other right at the bottom there so I'm going to leave it on for the moment to show you what it does so we'll go OK and we'll create an object closed object Oh, I've got Snap to Grid on. In version 9, Snap to Grid continues to work whether the grid is showing or not, which can be useful, but right now it's very distracting. So I'm going to right-click on the grid, and I can't turn it off because it's greyed out because the grid is not showing, so I'll show the design grid, turn off the Snap to Grid, and then deselect the show design... Oh, I can't turn that show the design grid off again. Um and go OK. So now I haven't got that crosshair following my cursor around. Good. So I've got my closed object. I'm going to choose the um, fill, standard step fill, and I'm just going to, I'm zoomed out to, zoomed right in, so I'm just going to go back to 100% so that I have some sort of scale to work to here, so I don't make a huge big object. And enter. So there is my object. Now, if I go out of True View, so I can hit T on my keyboard or I can click on this Show Artistic View icon at the top here, um, I can see that I have a start here and an end here. It's the first object, so it's got no other object to refer to to apply the closest join because it's got no other object to join to. It's on its own. Now, the reason I've got my green circle here and my cross down here is because I have actually been playing around with the start and end. So auto start and end up here under design will allow you to move the green circle and the white cross to the first stitch of the design and the last stitch of the design. I do that sometimes I um, just so that I can see what's going on but but default is at the center so you will have if you haven't changed it you will have this green circle and white cross in the middle here and you'll have a jump stitch going to the start and a jump stitch coming back from the end to the middle um, but I'm going to leave them there for the moment just so we can see what's going on here so I'll go okay um, if we look very closely as well there's another little tiny black circle in there and if I go here you might not be able to see but there is somewhere in there there's a little um, black triangle and that's because I've got the show connectors um, activated so it's showing the start of the object and the end of the object with the, those another way of seeing the start and end is to go to the reshape tool and we've got a green diamond where it starts and a red cross where it ends so that's your first object and then you go on to digitize another object and as I said we've got um, click off that we've got our closed object we've got apply closest join activated so I'm going to create another object over here enter and I'm not sure if this happens in all versions but in version 9 the end of this one has jumped as close as possible to the next object and the start of the next object is the closest point to that so it's basically created connectors at the closest point if you go back through the versions this end point of this first object may not jump I can't remember to be honest um, and you may still have to come from this end point but it will find the closest point on this object nevertheless the main th thing is that it will have a closest join between the two objects 
So no matter where you click first, the start point will be here at the closest distance from the previous object. Um, so if we go to reshape, if we select that object and go to reshape, it's really obvious that it's starting here and it's ending over here for whatever reason. Um, it doesn't know where the next object is. Now this happens even if you change colors. So if I select this and click off and I change to a red, this is this one's ended here. If I make another object here, closed object, enter, it's going to jump from that end of that one to the nearest point on this one and continue through. And this time we've got a red jump stitch because it's going to a new color. So it will tie off here and it will tie off here. That's what those little triangles indicate um, because it is um, more than two millimeters apart, those objects. All right. So it's really quick to digitize and the software works this all out for you. But when is this not a good idea? When would you want to turn this off? Well, one of the reasons you would want to turn it off is if you're making a pattern stamp and you already have objects on your screen. So um, with a pattern stamp, I'll just bring my grid back on. Um, with a pattern stamp, if you know, have made them before, you would understand that I'm going to put snap to grid back on as well. Okay, so now I've got, I'm going to snap to that horizontal grid line. Um, it's always a good idea when you're making pattern stamps, if you want to use them as a pattern run, then you want to start on the left hand side of the pattern and you want to end on the right hand side of the pattern. And so that the next pattern will start here and end on its right hand side and you won't get jump stitches. You also want to start and end on the same horizontal line. Um, if you're not using a grid you still need to be on the same, you could use a guideline, a horizontal guideline, so that you're on the same horizontal line so that the software doesn't have to jump up and down to the start of the next pattern. Um, so if you've already created some um, shapes and you want to create a pattern stamp if you do it on this side it'll be fine because it'll be jumping from here apply closest join and jump to the start if you start here it will jump to here and do your pattern stamp I'll just do one very quickly <coughs> so I'm going to do an open object for a pattern stamp and single run will be fine so I'm just going to create one here so I've started on this far left I'm using the grid snap to grid to make it accurate quickly. I've ended up back here so I need to end up over here so I'm going to also make a click over here. So it's going around the diamond then across the diamond and ending up on the right hand side and go enter. And as you can see it's jumping from here to here so it has actually put the start on the left hand side where we want it and the end on the right hand side. If I select it and go to the reshape tool it's it's starting here and ending there. That's very clear. So I could make a packet pattern stamp out of this really easily now. The problem comes, if I undo that, the problem comes is if I decide to make my pattern stamp over this side and I've got apply closest join on. Let's go open object again. Um, I'll go even on this side, the opposite side of that object. and enter, it's actually starting on this side of the pattern instead of the other side. So I can't make that into a pattern stamp unless I move the start and end points manually. So if I select that, go to the reshape tool, I can move my start and end points manually before I make a pattern stamp. But you've got to remember to do it. So you can either do that, move them manually and remember to do it, or you can, before you digitize any pattern stamps, um, then you can turn off your apply closest join and it won't be a problem. So if I undo that, so that's gone. And I go into my options and turn off under general, turn off apply closest join and go OK. Now if I do my open, ob uh, open object and create my pattern stamp,
enter, you will see that regardless of um, the fact that this has had to jump right over the top, this is still starting on the left-hand side where I started digitising and ending on the right-hand side where I finished digitising. And so therefore I don't have to worry about the manually moving the start and end points. If I select that and go to the reshape tool, they're in the right place. So if you've already got objects on your screen and you want to create a pattern stamp, either you have to remember to create it on the right hand side of the last object you digitized or turn off your auto, uh, your um, apply closest join or you will have to manually move your start and end points. Alright, I'm going to delete that or undo till it's gone. Another option is also, I'll just turn the grid back off again. If you want to use block digitizing to create a satin stitch, um, so I'm going to get block digitizing and I'll turn off that snap to grid. Okay, so um, let's put the apply closest join back on to see what happens first. Okay, apply closest join is back on. So now I've got block digitizing, I want a satin fill. And the reason I'm doing this is because I want to actually create a fringe. So I'm going to be cutting the bobbin thread eventually. Um, and so you will see what's underneath the satin stitch. So we're going to turn off the underlay as well while we're at it because I don't want to underlay. Okay, so I'm going to start my block digitizing. Now I want a satin fill um, and I'm going to start here. Just make a slight curve and enter. All right, so because this is the closest join um, from here to here, the satin is actually starting at this end and there's no travel stitches that will show underneath when I turn this into a fringe and it's ending over there. So, but if I, again, if I undo that and create it on this side, it'll do enter. It's actually doing the closest join here and I've got a travel stitch here. And once you start fiddling around with the start and end points, it can be tricky with this. So let's just go to the reshape. You can see it starts and ends both on the same side. So I'm going to start it over here. It's jumped all the way over there and I have lost that travel. So you, again, you can manually move it if you need to. Um, but I didn't want any travel stitches under there. And if I move it just a little bit further out, I have got a few tie-in stitches there, but that's only on the second one. They should blend in this close to the top of the fringe anyway. So again, I could have turned off my auto start, uh, apply closest join, and that wouldn't have been an issue. So it just means you have to think all the time um, now, if you have got your apply closest join turned off and you create another object, so let's click off. So let's create another closed object um, and I'll make sure I've got apply closest join turned off. Okay, so now I'm going to create another object down here. Enter you can see no stitches generated. So um, with block digitizing, it still generated the stitches, but with normal digitizing, it doesn't generate the stitches. So you need to actually enter an entry point and an exit point. It tells you down in the command bar right at the bottom left. Um, so if I want it to enter here, I can click there and then make another click at the opposite side and it will set the start and end points. So it can slow your digitizing down to have the apply closest join turned off permanently. Um, and you know, you wonder sometimes if you, f you forget why, why you're not getting any stitches and you start to panic because if you don't look down at that um, 
uh, entry and exit point, you can be, uh, you can forget you've got it turned off. So there are a couple of options for you anyway of when to do it. Now, the reason I showed you this block digitizing, I have actually used that in my upcoming Zoom meeting, which even if you're watching this video at a later date, you can still access and watch the recording um, where I am actually covering all sorts of uh, well, I'm covering making fringes and making a freestanding tassel. So I'll put a link to that Zoom meeting um, access on my website down below if you're interested in doing that at any time. As I said, um, you can either attend the meeting live or you can um, get access to the recording afterwards. Okay, now, for those of you with version 9... Uh, well, first of all, I'll show you what happens if you start to move objects around. So I'm going to select a few and delete them. So I'll delete that. I'll delete that. And I'll just have these three objects. So say you digitize these three objects. Let's put the apply closest join back on. Make sure that's back on. Okay. So you've digitized these three objects. And all of a sudden, you decide you want to move this one over here. Now nothing happened about where that join was. It's Once it's set when you've created an object and you start moving objects around it won't reapply new start and end points when you move the object. So you can get jump stitches all over the place because you've moved objects around and this happens quite often because you'll create some objects and then you'll decide oh um, that object looks better over here or you might want to change the order of stitching of certain objects so you start to well that's made it better but um, you start to get crossing jump stitches and it becomes complicated particularly if you've got lots of objects of the same color so if this one was blue as well um, and you change even the stitch order so at the moment this one's stitching last if I make it stitch second, so I move it up one object, that actually has improved the... Um, so I'll move it up another object, it's actually improved it. The, oh, that's not too bad either, so um, maybe last was better um, as an example. But if you've got lots of objects all of the same colour and then you want to later go on and path between them, you'll have jump stitches all over the place, you won't know where you're going. Um, so you then have to put things in the right stitch order and then set all your start and end points after that. But in version 9, we have a new tool which has simplified that to some extent. So um, it's a great new tool. So um, obviously put your things in the, your objects, things, objects in the correct stitch order uh, before you do this, but then select all the objects and go to the edit toolbox and if you come down past branching you'll find apply closest join that will reapply the closest join once you've got all your objects in the right order so we'll click on that and as you can see those crossed jump stitches no longer exist so now if you have objects over the top here that you can path under you can add paths easily because you're going to go from um, the closest path and you can see quickly find which jump stitch goes where rather than having to try and follow crossed over jump stitches so if you don't know what pathing is I have a video about that as well on YouTube here that you can watch so I will put a link to that as well so I hope you now understand all about applying closest join. So if you haven't got version 9 with this wonderful tool, as I said, you will have to manually go in and reset your start and end points if you move your objects around on the, on the screen or if you change the stitch order. You're going to have jump stitches in weird places. And the aim of good digitizing is to... Um, clean up all of that so that your stitch out is nice and clean and where possible path between your objects so that you don't have unnecessary tie-ins and tie-outs. So I hope that's been helpful and I'll see you in the next video.